in today's video, uh, well, actually this may take a couple days to finish, but I am chasing after the elusive one hit white print. And here's the thing about it. I've seen YouTube videos, I've seen Instagram posts, Facebook posts about whether or not it can actually be achieved. And I've seen some people toting that it can be, and some say that it's simply a technique, as others say it's in the preparation. Well, I'm gonna do my best to figure out the truth. Uh, and here's how I'm thinking I'm gonna do it. We're gonna have four screens in total. Two of the screens are gonna be your traditional 110. The other two are gonna be our S-Mesh, which is a thin thread 150, that actually under a microscope has bigger openings than your traditional 110. In conjunction with that, we're going to do a couple different coating techniques. We're gonna do a two and two, just your standard, you know, hit it twice, flip it, hit it twice, let it dry. We're also gonna do the two and two, let it dry, followed by a two on the uh, face of the screen. My assumption, just from experience, says that if you actually wanna pull off the single hit white, it takes more labor here in the screen room by doing a coat, letting it dry, doing a second coat to thicken up the stencil. Uh, another thing that I am gonna do just to maximize the complexity of this to prove if it's truly doable in a worst case scenario is we're gonna have a graphic that has, that's printing a lot of white. Okay, and in an effort to be uh, efficient, while the film is printing, I'm gonna head to the dark room and I'm gonna put my second coat of emulsion on the bottom side of the screen. I've seen the messages, I've seen the comments, and there seems to be two sides of the camp, but the ones that say it's possible seem to be these almost elitist type of printers that say it's, it's a skill, right? And you have to have the touch or the technique to pull it off. In my opinion, if a particular technique can't be trained fairly quickly and efficiently and utilized on a daily basis, it's not worth a fuck. So, if this technique is something that requires a very special touch, especially on a manual press, then don't want it. Not gonna use it, it's worthless, I'm kicking it out of the, I'm kicking it out. If however, it could be set up fairly efficiently and you could actually make it work, then it's something that I may consider adopting and maybe you all could consider adopting it as well. As for our ink, we are using the Wilflex Amazing Bright White. And to eliminate any margin for error, we're gonna sharpen our squeegee. Get that thing razor sharp. Oh yeah, nice crispy edge. Uh, let's dive in. Then you're gonna preload your image with ink. So you literally do a forced flood that actually pushes the ink into the opening of the stencil. Some say that you have to do it with a push. Some say you have to do it with the pull. I'm here to test them both and see which one works best. We're gonna start with the pull and I'm gonna do a push stroke on the same screen. And then I'm gonna move on, work my way down the list to see which one does it best. Okay, here we go, one hit. Yeah, same thing. Now maybe my off contact was a little funky, doubt it, but overall looks like shit. First off, this is the stencil that only used one coat. Uh, we preloaded it and we did the pull stroke and this is the result. Not great. Looks like any other print with white plastisol and clearly this print we would have to do a print flash print, print to pull it off, right? You can see the black through it. The pull stroke on a single coated 110 mesh screen, not possible. Okay, now let's try it. Same screen, same mesh count with the push stroke. The flood, make sure to push that ink down into the screen, one more. Okay, and we're doing the push stroke this time. Here we go, good pressure, downward. Did it clear? Not really. Maybe the off contact's a little funky. I mean, just like any other white print. It's okay, I was able to hit it one time without double pulling it, but clearly it needs to be print flash printed for, uh, you know, an acceptable white. That's, I mean, this is gray. This is, this is Heather Gray. And here's where I know a bunch of you that are maybe believers in the system are gonna chime in and say, well, you're not doing it right. And to you guys, I say, 
if there's a certain degree of angle you need to have on your blade for it to work, eh. If there's a certain, a very specific amount of pressure that you need to have to pull it off, eh. Now, I accept it if it's a certain screen technique or a certain mesh count, that I can believe. But if it comes down to, to such specific angles and pressures, then it's not gonna fly, so it's not gonna work. What I have here is a screen that was coated, set to dry, and then a second coat of emulsion was put on the bottom. So the stencil is just a little bit thicker, not much. And I have been told and informed and educated that this is what has to happen for this to actually work. I don't have any expectations for it to actually work, but we're gonna try it right now. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna do a nice deep flood. Really try to fill that image with ink. Okay, we're gonna start with the pull stroke. Decent pressure, because I just want to hit it once. I want it to stick, so I'm using a decent amount of pressure, and I'm pulling slow and steady. Now, you probably can't see this, but overall, the Plastisol did clear the mesh first try with decent downward pressure, one stroke. Now I'm gonna pull it up, and same thing. It's still heather gray. So even on the double-coated screen, it, it didn't work on the pull stroke. I'm gonna try the push stroke real quick. Not great. Last try with this screen, I'm gonna do a nice thick flood, pushing that ink into the image. But this time, we're doing the push stroke. Again, good downward pressure. I always like to have a little bit of an angle just to prevent catching. And I'm gonna put, oh shit, fuck that up. Push, good downward angle, good downward force. And exactly the same thing. Heather Gray. And Heather Gray, even on a double coated screen. I, I'm pretty much already certain that this isn't gonna work, but this is the S thread or the thin mesh screen, and it has been double coated. I'm gonna just give this one a real quick shot. I already know it's not gonna work, but we're gonna give it a try just to make sure. When this one fails, I do have another thing that I wanna try out. Filling the image up with ink, three pulls just to really push that ink in there. And nice downward pressure, one push, and hopefully it cleared. This just, again, attests to the power of the thin thread mesh from Maru, Marukami, or whoever, the Marukami, what the, however you say it. Uh, it cleared 10 times better than both of the traditional 110s, I'm gonna now call the shit mesh. So it cleared way better. Uh, it also popped up a lot better, and because of that, the white, does look a little bit brighter white on one hit. It would still need to be print flash printed if the client wanted a bright white. Alrighty, it's day two. I'm back at the shop, 10 a.m. A big, bold, white image, in my opinion, is you can't pull off a one stroke white print with that. From, from what I've tested out so far. I am, I am gonna give it one more shot with a thinner image, which I know will be easier to do it that way, but I still don't think it's 100% possible. Okay, you see that? Pretty good off contact. Pretty high. I would say it's about the thickness of a quarter uh, with a dime on top of it. Now, I'm gonna fill it with ink. This is my second attempt. I'm gonna do a pull stroke this time. Fill the image with ink. And I've always found too, just to prevent catching, it actually helps to hold your squeegee at an angle, not perfectly straight. It prevents catching when you first hit the openings where you're printing a lot of white. Nice, slow, even pressure. First pull. Now let me show you. As you can see that we definitely cleared everything. You see there's no little white spots hanging out in there. So we got a good clear print. Even here, it's just, it's not what I would consider a perfect bright white print. It's pretty bright, and some clients might accept this, you know what I mean? But overall, nah, it needs to be print flash printed. But I do got one more trick up my sleeve. I got another screen in there drying right now, and I put a really thick stencil on the bottom of it. So I'm gonna expose it, I'm gonna wash it out, and I'm gonna do a print with it and see if that gives us what we need to get that one hit white. Not looking good so far. Not looking good. However, I will admit, after stepping away and then looking at this, that's a, if it wasn't a big, bold image like this, right, clearly that's unacceptable because you can see the heathering in it. But if it's just a mildly dense white print like this, it looks pretty white from far away. I'm not gonna lie. 
I'm gonna uh, go ahead and run a few of them just for myself. All right, now if any of these one stroke methods had a chance in working, it would be this screen right here. It's got a double thick stencil on the bottom, so it's gonna hold a lot more ink, which will actually lay more ink on the substrate. So this is our best shot. So I'm gonna use my Wilflex white, but in conjunction with that, I'm also gonna test it using some other white that we have in the shop. This is Excalibur Saber white. This is Excalibur white. I'm gonna do my flood fill, which is essentially pushing the ink into the opening of that mesh there you go three times definitely filled it up and i'm just going to do my pull stroke at an angle to help prevent catching you can see the screen's clear it's actually pretty good the first thing i do notice though is it's not as smooth there's more there's just more ink laid down this is the excalibur ink printed through a 110 mesh uh, with a screen that was coated, set aside to dry, and then the face was coated again one more time, set aside to dry, and then uh, we exposed the stencil. With the Will Flex ink, we're so used to print flash printing and it looks really good and it's very opaque when you do a print flash print, but it doesn't seem to work as well when you're trying to get a one stroke white. The ink does matter. Let me know in the comments, left or right, if you can tell any difference at all. This is the Excalibur, this is the Wilflex. I have kind of come to the conclusion that one stroke white is achievable if the image isn't all white and if uh, you use certain inks. You gotta use high opacity inks meant for high opacity. So Excalibur Saber White is that, whereas the Wilflex Amazing White is an amazing ink. It prints really well, really smooth, but it's not quite as opaque and it doesn't achieve that one stroke that we're looking for. Before I wrap this up, I'm bringing out another one of the old screens. This is yeah, double coated 48, so this is a thin thread, and I'm gonna use the Excalibur white on it just to see. A little bit of a jank there with the pool, but the one thing that you'll notice right away is the S-mesh just clears so much better than the traditional screens, whatever those thread thicknesses were. Still, same deal, man. Like, you're gonna have to print flash print it. Like, you can see the black fibers poking through, and it's making a kind of a, uh, very light heather gray. If it's a big image like this, it's, it's probably not gonna work no matter how thick your stencil is or any of that kind of shit. If, however, it's a graphic like this where there's not quite so much white in it, you can, you can get away with it. No customer would question this. That's a bright white. Final thoughts, it depends on the project. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this answers some of your questions, but it really didn't answer my questions. It just made me more curious. I clearly have more research to do. Uh, so at this moment, it works sometimes. Yeah, I'm just as confused as I was before. Uh, anyway, take care of yourselves, Brent fam. Hey, y'all, peace out.